For the next um, table topics, I'd like to introduce Armani Pierre, who is a uh, Miss Haiti International. State of America. The militant Al Qaeda units had just captured a group of American missionaries doing the relief work in Somalia. You knew where they've been held, and you have all the military aspects in your disposal. The terrorists are demanding a list of unreasonable conditions for their release. How would you solve this problem and win the missionary freedom? What if they tell you they're going to kill one missionary a day until you can find their freedom? How would you do that? Nothing like being thrust into <laughs> the worst aspects of being the President of the United States. Why didn't you ask me about who I was going to invite to my inauguration? <laughs> that would be much more enjoyable. And of course, you're like me. You can probably think of several movies that have been written, scripted along this line, where a, it's a terrible scenario. People's lives are at stake. Time is of the essence. And you have to make very difficult decisions. Of course, I want to try to save those lives. Of course, I want to try to do it in a way that's going to risk the fewest lives possible. Of course, I want to do it in a way that those rats, the terrorists, get what's coming to them. But how? I'm hoping that when I become president of the United States, I'm going to find out that there are some incredible resources that I don't know about right now that are going to help me with this decision. I'm going to hope that the uh, SEAL, SEAL teams, the Delta Force, that they have some fancy gadgetry at their disposal, that they've got a missile that can be targeted to X marks the spot and it won't miss. I can hope. I can dream. But I will say this. If I had become the President of the United States, I have to believe that I would have the wherewithal, not only with all of the resources at my disposal, but also my own cunning, my own decision-making ability, that I would do the right thing with what was available at that time. Thank you, Arthur. Number two question go to Michael. You got a very wealthy but a strange relative. He's a billionaire. He will you two billion dollars. The only problem is, the only way to get the two billion dollars, you have to spend 50 million dollars in 24 hours. There's a catch. You cannot spend it in one place. And you cannot buy anything that costs over 500,000. You have to do it in a way that is tax deductible. In some point in time, it had to help somebody. How would you spend it? Well, thank you. I got a very wealthy relative. I'm not too good at him. <laughs> <laughs> I wish Mr. Walton would have a relative. <laughs> <laughs> and I have 
have to spend $50 million. In 24 hours. That's easy. I'm talking with all of the needs. I just uh, went over to Memphis for the weekend. I used to live there. Plenty of needs there. Went through my hometown, which is Fort City, Arkansas. Tremendous amount of needs. I've always talked about it jokingly, my wife and I, about if you hit the lottery, what would you do? Yada, yada, yada. And as always, I got to give away half of it. So my half will be 50 million of it. And so that's just like hitting the lottery, even though a relative gave it to me. I could think of all the needs from the, uh, starting first with education. Uh, I'm sure I could drop 25 million in Little Rock alone on education, uh, not just for the kids' school supplies, the kids' coats, or anything else they might need. But I set up a big time college fund that will guarantee any kid in, in, in high school that will uh, finish school. That if you finish school, you can go to any school of your choice. That's my 50 million. That's how I spend Thank you, Michael. I remember you when I went to go to your name on the end of this, you did not mention my name. <laughs> okay, the third question will go to Will. If you were the VP of membership of the Toastmaster of Lulua, what are some activities would you conduct to keep a group going? And how would you partner with the VP of Toastmaster of Lulua to make it happen? Appreciate that question. Well, you know, last year I was the VP of membership, and we did have some growth. I didn't really do that much, though. I'm a part of a really good club because I have a lot of support from everyone else. I know that Aaron last year really came out strong on the website. He developed a killer website that half the people in Little Rock searching for this monster group they found us because of him. And uh, uh, Roger, he's always here. He's a, a kind of a, a beacon of light for us. <laughs> he's always ready to help people. And I know that when, when Aaron invited people to come to our club, and they would see Roger, they would speak with Roger, they'd get some encouragement there. You may have, is Will Atkins still in this club? Yeah. He moved. Okay. Well, I haven't been around for a while. But Will! <laughs> signed up into the roles and made sure that the meetings really hung. So, namely, I would tap into my resources in this group and to help me spread the word. Because I know that people are coming to meetings, having a good time, they're going to take that out there, they're going to talk to people, it's going to bring more people back in. So, if I were to be of membership again, that's where I would put my focus first on this group and then developing activities outside. I'll see you after class in the meeting. Thank you. Jojo, this is the nicest class out of all the group in Arkansas, and we all love it. Can you tell our guests what are some important things on our class and why we love this class? Thank you, Mabel Public Master. I was uh, sharing to Frankie, actually, as a matter of fact, in the beginning of our class, uh, why I chose this class. I when I when I was a guest, and it wasn't that far ago, maybe a few months ago, and I told actually a few Toastmaster groups in the rock, and participated in, in those meetings as a guest, wanted to gauge a feeling how the meeting is conducted, what, what the participants, what kind of uh, procedures they carry, what kind of, how they critique the speeches, and uh, just am I able to establish a friendship, a relationship with those people uh, where I would feel comfortable and uh, to really work on my problems as a public speaker, overcome my anxiety, my fears, and be able to take the podium and uh, really grow professionally, personally. And I found this group to be very motivating, very encouraging, very warm and friendly, very simple, to a level where it accepts you, it helps you along, 
gives you the motivation you need, and that also gives you the critique when you need it in a friendly, acceptable way. So, in conclusion, I joined this group because it's one of the best in the world. Thank you. Give me a tea! <laughs> Give me a tea!